Hey everyone, my name is Jeremy Siskin. I'm the author of this book called Playing Solo Jazz Piano. You can get it at my website, jeremysiskin.com. It's the best investment you'll ever make. I mean, it, the value is bound to appreciate over time. Okay, I'm just joking. Uh, what we're really here for uh, is your second lesson in jazz piano voicings. If you haven't watched the first lesson in jazz piano voicings, it's probably a good uh, idea to go and do that before you watch this lesson. And what we're gonna be doing here is we're gonna be taking our two-handed shell voicings um, and we're going to figure out ways to play these same things or similar things uh, with just one hand so that if you have to play the bass with your left hand uh, for instance or if you have to play a melody or a solo with your right hand you could play a nice sounding voicing in just one hand but uh, to recap what we did last time is that we took this kind of blocked out chord C major 7 and we created what we call type A and type B voicings. So zoom in, in just a little, so hopefully you can see. Um, this bass note is in parentheses because you're not going to play that. The bass player is playing this. So these voicings are not meant for solo piano. They're meant for uh, playing with a band. Um, so the bass will play the root. You don't play the root. And you play the third and seventh in your left hand, the ninth and fifth in your right. And there's these two different types of voicings, type A and type B. There's type B, this was type A. And the reason that we have type A and type B is in chord progressions that move in the circle of fifths, like the two, five, one progression, most famously and most crucially, we wanna alternate between type A and type B to create really smooth voice leading. So that when we have Two, five, one, each note each note is moving by step or staying the same so that if someone were to sing it it would be a very easy beautiful logical part to sing okay if any of that doesn't sound familiar with you I would recommend going and checking in with that other video which is called first lesson in jazz piano voices so again, this kind of occupies both of your hands. So if you want to do something else with one of your hand, um, I'm gonna show you two different ways that you can approach it. The first one is a very easy concept uh, to teach and learn, um, but takes a little while to master. And uh, the concept is basically that we're going to take off the top note, okay? And then we're gonna play the three notes of the voicing in one hand. Um, so now, the key is that we always still have the third and the seventh. Remember, we call those our essential tones. And then we're gonna have one of the two color tones. So now our new formula is going to be three, seven, nine for type A and seven, three, five for type B. And you'll hear this actually still sounds pretty nice. So here's three, seven, nine, this is your type A. It's not quite as resonant as that one, right? And here's your type B. And everything else remains the same. If we're going to uh, have a two, five, one, and here I'm just gonna write this in the right hand, we'll, we'll still alternate between type A and type B. So if we have a two, five, one in the key of C, Here's your root notes. We'd have three, seven, nine, seven, three, five, and then back to three, seven, nine. So three, seven, nine, seven, three, five, three, seven, nine. So it'll sound like this. I'll zoom in a little bit. I know it might be a little hard to see. lovely. Now, notice our rule about staying in between C3 and, our, and C4 with the lowest note of your voicing, it still holds. Okay, so right, this F, it's right in between these, this F is, stays in between, this E stays in between. If you start going lower than that, it's going to get muddy. If you go higher, you're going to be in the range of the melody, and it's not going to be a very supportive resonance chord. Resonant chord, it really wants to be in that range. And that doesn't change whether you're playing the voicing with the right hand, for example, 
example, if you're gonna play a bass line with the left hand, or if there's a bass player, so here's where I was, I'm gonna take that same exact register in the left hand, and now I'm gonna solo. Same exact register, no matter which hand is playing that. And let's take a look at, um, you know, last time we did um, a two, five, one in F major, going from G minor seven to C seven to F major seven, starting on type B. So let's see what that would look like if we go B, A, B. So here it's seven, three, five, nine. What am I doing? I gotta get some sleep here. Uh, <laughs> and then three, seven, nine. Wow. Sorry about that. Seven, three, five. Just when you think you got this on automatic lockdown. Um, go ahead, do that yourself and then check your answer against mine. I don't think I'm delusional enough that I messed this up. Make sure that's really the only correct place that you can put it. If you put it higher or lower, you're just not in the right register. Okay. Now let me show you something uh, that confuses some people. Um, what if this chord were C7 sharp five? We have this issue that our voicing doesn't include the fifth, right? We have the third, the seventh, and the ninth, but no fifth. Um, and I'm of the opinion that you actually don't need to do anything with that information if your voicing doesn't already have the fifth. What that is telling you is that if you have a fifth, it ought to be sharp to match somebody else in the band or to match the melody or to get the sonority. Um, but if you're not playing a fifth, you're not obligated to add one. If you're neurotic and you feel like it says sharp five, I really need a sharp five, um, then you are welcome to add a fourth note. And we're gonna talk more about creating a fourth note, um, at making a four note voicing in a little bit. Um, but no, you do not have to include every note that's indicated there. Remember, chord symbols, and this is important, give you information, not instructions. So that's informing you that if you have a five, it's gonna need to be sharp, but it's not saying you must have a sharp five in the voice, okay? So this is not strictly needed. So those are what we call three note shell voicings. You have your two essential tones, your third and your seventh, and then you have the fifth or the ninth on top. I want to show you now slightly more complicated making a four note shell voicing. Um, and it's slightly complicated because we have this problem. So the, the way that I would like to be able to teach this, and I'm showing this to you so that you can have a really deep understanding instead of just, I could give you a formula and I will give you a formula, but I want you to like really understand on a deep level why some of these things are the way they are. Um, but let's take a look um, at C major seven in type A. Okay, so there's our regular two-handed shell voicing. Now, uh, right, what we do to create a three-note shell voicing is we get rid of this note. Um, but the easiest way to create a four-note shell voicing is to bring that note down. So instead of that high G, we're gonna have a low G. So we have E, G, B, D. So this is possible, but in jazz, we don't really love these stacks of thirds, right? Um, this feels a little bit closed in and a little bit basic. So often what we're gonna do here is we're gonna use this voicing, but we'll substitute in the 13th, this A natural, for the fifth. And you can hear that that's a nicer sound. Okay. Now let's take a look at C7 in type B, C major seven, sorry. Whoa, I don't know what just happened there. Space time continuum just broke. So uh, here's your normal type B. Oops, no, I did that wrong. This is seven, three, five, nine. Um, and here, it's actually not a problem to take this note and send it down here. And so we're gonna come up with this four note voicing. By the way, you 
might be thinking four note voicings are better than three note voicings because there's more notes, more color. And in some cases that's true, um, but I, I would say I probably use three note and four note voicings equally. One consideration is tempo. Usually the slower the tempo, the thicker you want your voicings to be, because you, you have this opportunity to add more thickness and color. Whereas at a faster tempo, you might not really be able to hear four notes versus three notes. I hear great jazz pianists using three note voicings, four note voicings, sometimes two note voicings, um, maybe occasionally a five note voicing. Um, there's not a right way and a wrong way. It kind of depends on style and like I said, things like, like tempo. But do listen, um, here's a, your three note type A on C major. Your four note is a little more colorful. Here's your three note on type B. Your four note is a little more colorful. Um, I did have a teacher who said something kind of interesting that I've always kind of tossed around in my head, um, which is that the more notes that you play in the left hand, the fewer surprising color notes you have to add in the right hand. So um, even though you might think more notes in the left hand is better, um, now that, you know, if you're playing this note, now that's not really a surprising color in the right hand. If, you know, if you're playing the A in the left, you play the A in the right, okay. Whereas if you don't, it feels a little bit different. So it's just a matter of taste. Chick Corea usually only plays four no or three notes in, in his left hand voices. Um, okay, so that's with major and dominant seventh chords. Um, now with a minor seventh chord, uh, it is a little bit different. And maybe other people teach this a different way. Um, so, you know, you're still going to take the top note, lasso it <laughs> down by an octave. Um, and this does give you that stack of thirds. But in a minor seventh chord, we don't usually use the 13. Um, so typically, people just use this stack of thirds on a minor seventh chord. If you're using type B, you don't have a problem at all. You'll just bring down that top note. And you get C. This is a very high voicing. I'm sorry for all the ledger lines. It's C, E, F, A. So I told you I would give you a formula. So um, for major and dominant seventh chords, type A, the formula is 3, 13, 7, 9. And again, for a C major 7, that looks like this, 3, 13, 7, and 9. And type B is going to be 7, 9, 3. And you can use the, use the fifth or the 13th. Either one is totally fine. Fifth sounds like this. 13th sounds like this. Both nice colors. If you're really wanting as much color as possible, you could use the fifth and the 13th. I don't know that it adds that much, but for the right moment, you might want to. Um, and then for minor seventh chords, it's just going to be three, five, seven, nine for type A. So here's D minor seven, three, five, seven, nine, and I'm going to write the type B lower. I just did it for you up the octave, but this is right on our borderline, right? Remember our lowest note is going to be between these two C's. So this kind of matches our lowest note instead of our highest note. And the formula there is seven, nine, three, five. So uh, if we're doing a two, five, one, using these four note voicings, it might look something like this. If it's A, B, A, here's D minor seven, G seven, this is seven, nine, three, 13. This is three, five, seven, nine. And then C major seven goes back to type A. It's pretty sexy. Again, just so for your oral comparison, here's the three notes. Really nice too. Four notes, sounds a little more closed in, a little bit more. If we start on type B, I am out of line, so I'm going to erase this type A. 
you can pause it right now if you want to copy this down. Um, again, we're going to go ahead and do this in F major, just keeping with our tradition this lesson. It's not something I always do, just kind of felt like it. And we're going to do B, A, B. So remember B, the formula is going to be 7, 9, 3, and then 5 for minor. For type A, we're going to have 3, 13, 7, 9. And then for type B, we'll have, sorry, 7, 9, 3, and then the 5th or the 13th on top. Uh, let's go ahead and just end with the 5th on top. So... through my 251 exercise uh, with your two-handed voicings, you want to do the same thing now with your one-handed voicings. So you've got plenty to practice. Uh, please leave any questions, any comments uh, in the, uh, well, leave them in the comments, of course. Uh, like and subscribe. Buy my book from my website. I really appreciate it. It makes me so happy every time I uh, see a friend buy a book from a website, from my website. And uh, stay tuned. There'll be more coming.